Nothing unfamiliar. Um, we're going to discuss today in the lesson, Ministry and Marketplace. <laughs> and we're going to go with the foundation scripture that's already been planted in us this week, Habakkuk 2 and 2. I was telling Lady Rankin how um, Monday or Tuesday before Wednesday that the Lord had given me this scripture um, to bring forth on today. And some of the things that he was giving me, I was like, Lord, um, I can, how can I come with this before a certain thing had taken place? Which what needed to take place, the leadership needed to come first with it. So it wasn't a surprise to me Wednesday when she was like, I don't know how I'm gonna get teaching Wednesday, you know. So they kind of gave me a little uh, confirmation a little bit that you just go with what we're gonna go with today. So the foundation of scripture, like I said, is Habakkuk 2 and 2. The Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tablets that ye may run that read it then. This is the purpose scripture that I'm gonna base the lesson on this morning. But first we're going to break down ministry. Ministry, as we know, is to equip, to resource, which is to supply and support, to train, to help, and to serve. Marketplace, the place you go, the place where you work, is the place in the city with most with the most influence mm -hmm. and the place where you have the most influence. Mm -hmm. It is the community we live in, our environment. It is the job you work on. It is the grocery store, the mall, where you shop. It is where goods that are needed for your life are bought and exchanged. It is where relationships are formed and where you spend a good portion of your time and your effort is in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. We are here on Sunday mornings, we are here on Wednesdays, but where we spend our, the majority of our time is out of the temple, is out of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And the characteristics that we display in here should be evident in the characteristic that we display on the outside. Mm -hmm. The biblical source for the marketplace is a public open place where people congregate and exchange goods and business and ran business. Now we know that Jesus were in the marketplace on several occasions in Mark 6 and 56 it says, and whithersoever he, being Jesus, entered into the village or cities or countries, they laid the sick in the streets and they besought him, they pressed him, that they might even just touch, that they have a glimpse of, an experience of him because they had heard about him. They had knew his character. They had knew what he stood for. That they just desired to touch the borders of his garments. And as many as touched him, the Bible said that they were made whole. The people who were seeking him, wherever he went, they found him in the marketplace. They found him in a position where he carried ministry with him. He carried his purpose with him. In every aspect of Jesus' life, every facet of his life, he carried ministry with him. Wherever he was seen in the city, in the market, he carried. In the temple, he represented Father God. He represent his purpose. He represent 
to his agenda. He represented his father's vision. Now keep that on your mind, the forefront. He represented his father's vision and he carried the mission and the purpose inside of him. Not just inside of the temple, but wherever he went Amen. in the marketplace, where he worked, where he lived, where he bought groceries, where in the mall, he carried the vision and the purpose with him. Jesus, we know he was a carpenter. He was a teacher. He was the Messiah. He was the son of God as well as a marketplace minister. Mm -hmm. This is what you got when Jesus was in your presence. This is what you got when you got him, when you got Jesus. You got everything that the Father represented, the vision from heaven, you got in Jesus. So let us take a brief moment and we're gonna look at Peter, the disciple, the student, of Jesus. <clears throat> John 14 and 12 say, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the work that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go into my Father's house, he says, Greater works. This is Jesus talking to the disciples. Greater works to his disciples because he knew, Jesus knew the concept of what he put on the inside of them. Jesus knew what he was imparting to him, to them. Jesus knew the vision of the Father that he was engrafting into him. Jesus asked the question to Peter, who do you say that I am? He says, I know what they say, but what I want to know, what do you say? What do you get when you get Jesus? What do you get when you see me? What do you get, Peter, when you see me? What do people get in the marketplace when they see you? What do we get when we see you in verse United? What do we get when they see you in the grocery store and in the mall? Matthew 16 and 16, Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, that upon, <coughs> excuse me, that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus spoke that to him because Peter had a revelation it was revealed to him, his purpose. I want to ask the question, is Peter the rock or is Jesus the rock? But I don't want you to answer that question because at this point, Revelation was introduced. Habakkuk 2 and 2 was introduced. It was made plain. It was revealed to him who the vision was, the visionary, the purpose, the mission. Now they are one. Now they are one. So you don't have to separate the church from Jesus. Because when you see the church, you see Jesus. When you see Jesus, you see the vision and his purpose. Now they are one. Peter's word was engrafted into the Christ agenda. We have to be engrafted into the ministry's agenda. Then Jesus said, upon this revelation, upon the vision, the church is built. Mm -hmm. Now we know that before he was called Simon Peter, Peter was a fisherman by occupation. Mm -hmm. The disciples were told to make that I'll make you fishers of men. I'll make you ministers in the temple. I'll make you ministers in the mountains. 
I'll make you ministers in the marketplace. I'll make you ministers in the valley, in whatever position in life you are who I called and chose and created you to be. And that's what you are to represent, the characteristics of the vision, the characteristics of, the, of Christ. Once his natural abilities connected with his revealed purpose, he gained the capacity to run with it. He gained the capacity. Once he was able to vision, have the vision, once he was able to see, once he, things were revealed to him who Christ was, he was then able to run with it. Matthew 28 and 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So I say to you, what did we get when we get when we got Peter? Who is he as a man? What we get when we get Peter is the man illuminated by his call, united with the Christ vision. He was a natural fisherman with no vision, called and prepared for ministry, prepared for Habakkuk 2 and 2. At this appointed time, after what was revealed to him, what was made plain to him, now he can preach. Now he can minister. Now he can be effective. Now he can preach and 3,000 are saved on the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem. Later in Acts 4, the church grew because once it was made plain to him, once the Christ, once he knew who Jesus was, once he had a revelation, once the light came on, once he received his sight, he was able to fulfill the vision, the ministry, the purpose. In every aspect of life, in the marketplace. The marketplace is the place of the highest potential to grow the kingdom. The highest potential for evangelism. In Acts 3, Peter was able to heal a crippled man Thank you, Lord. at the gate outside the temple. In the marketplace, his work was not just limited to the temple, but extended to who he was, to who God called him to be. And wherever he went, he represented the vision of Christ. Wherever he went, he represented his call and his purpose. Even in his natural trade, his natural occupation, Christ was able to use that and turn it, not just into a natural fisherman, but that I'll turn this, I'll touch you and I'll make you fishers of men. Yes. Whatever your natural position in life, you're placed on your job in the marketplace, and who you are and the vision you have for Christ and ministry, and this ministry, you represent that. And when you minister to people, when you evangelize, when you reach out to people, you are a walking evangelist because the people see the character of God and the spirit of God on the inside of you and will be drawn to you because of the Christ in you. And you are able to speak life into these people and direct him and evangelize. And tell them about the goodness of the Lord. Tell them the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Tell them about where you worship. Tell them about the vision of your ministry. <clears throat> now this part is a setup. He told the prophet to make it plain, referring to the vision, to make it plain. Plain so that not only could the prophet himself read it and fulfill it, not only could the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, the, the apostle could read it and fulfill it, but all, all who, we, who would be filling it, <clears throat> fulfilling it, could read it and run with it at its appointed time. Once the vision is made plain, Isaiah 6 and 22, a little one shall become a thousand, a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. And I like to place the glory of God in that. Now, let us talk about the role you play individually and collectively. Let us talk about the role of the ministry, of the ministers in First United. <clears throat> Let us talk about the contribution that you play. Examine the makeup of the unified body of believers and its purpose. Examine the church and its purpose along with your personal purpose. Now immerse yourself and your individual role in the Great Commission, in the Go Ye Therefore, teach all nations, and to do the work of the evangelist is that your character represents and evangelize the nations, the community, your city, that who you are is a walking testimony to the vision that was in part and revealed into you. The vision of Christ Jesus, the vision of the ministry where you worship. The vision of Christ and the vision of the church or a business, what makes them one? What makes them unified? What made Peter and Jesus one? One thing Peter had a revelation. One thing Peter believed. Peter believed that Jesus was the Son of God. They had one belief. They believed the same thing. And that's what made them one. What do we believe? What do you believe? I believe God the Father. This is what I, is on your website, on our website. On our, I believe God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. What do you believe? What do we believe as a collective body of believers? What do we believe as First United? Are we unified on what we believe? Do we believe the same thing? Do we have the same vision? Do we have the same mission? Do we have the same purpose? Do we take that belief into the marketplace? Do we take that belief in the individual callings and ministry that God has given us? Do we take that belief in our homes? Do we take that belief and engraft it, allow it to be engrafted in us as a part of us, of who we are and what we stand for? Is that what we deliver to the nation? Is that what we deliver to the community? Is that what we deliver in the grocery store? Is that what we deliver? Is that how we affect our community by what we believe and who we believe in and what we stand for? I believe God the Father. 
God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Although they are three, they are one. Although they are three, they are one. I believe the Bible is the immutable and infallible word of the Lord God written by holy men of God as the Holy Ghost inspired them. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, and the operations of the gifts of the Spirit. I believe the church, the body of Christ, is a representative of the kingdom of heaven in the earth. So what that is saying is you believe that you are a representative of heaven mm. in the earth, mm. in this ministry, in this marketplace, on your job, in the mall, wherever you go. This is what make us one. This is what make us have the foundation and the motivation this backs up the vision. This backs up the vision that's revealed to us. This backs up the desire for the glory. This backs up that a little one shall become. This backs up everything we stand for because of what and who we believe in. That unifies us. That makes us a church. That makes us a ministry that makes us a part of the body of Christ that makes us believers in Christ not only does that cause us to fulfill the purpose of our local ministry or our, or our local church or where we worship that puts us in a position to feel the purpose of heaven the purpose of Christ what Christ came for the purpose that he said go ye therefore teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost that he the great commission to preach the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ has risen, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, that the Son of God is coming again to receive his people, to receive those that have a relationship with them, those that are unspotted, to take them up into his presence, into his kingdom, to be with him. This is our purpose and our agenda. And that everything we do, how we were made, the, the jobs that we have obtained, that we collectively place that together, that is who we are. That is where our light shines. That is where our greatest influence for Christ and ministry is. That is street ministry. This is what makes ministry fitly joined together, Ephesians 4. This is what makes ministry fitly joined together, what we believe, who we are, what we stand for, that we know who we are, and that people know what they get when they get you. What do they get when they get wow. first united? Apostle Paul said, I beseech you to walk worthy of the vocation you are called with the fruit of the Spirit, keeping the unity, one body, one spirit, one hope, Lord, faith, baptism, one God. So he gave some apostle, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to perfect and to edify, to perfect, to edify, and to feed. Mm -hmm. You are a vital part. You are a vital part, not only of the ministry of Christ, not only of the kingdom of heaven revealing itself upon earth, but you are a vital part in, in ministry, you are a vital part in your church, you are a vital part to worship, you are a vital part to, to praise and when someone says let's stand and let's worship 
You know why we're worshiping? We're not worshiping because they say let's stand up. We're worshiping because I believe God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. It's because we believe we are heirs of Christ. It's because we believe we are the children of God. It's because we have hope. We have hope in something beyond us. We have hope in eternity, in eternal life with Christ. This is why we worship. We worship because he's there with us all the time through every trial, through every tribulation, everything we go through in life. He brings us through and he brings us out. This is why we worship. We worship because we love God. We love Jesus. We worship because we have a revelation. We worship because we have a vision. This is why we worship. This is why we lift up holy hands. This is why we pray. This is why we are who we are. Amen. You are a vital part of ministry. You are a part of what God brings to the table. Your gifts, your talents, your occupation, your character, your life experiences, all are incorporated in who you are. All are incorporated in this church as a part of this church. Your testimony is a part of this church. Your trade, your teaching abilities, your doctoral degrees, your nursing, your pharmacies, your accounting, all of who you are is a makeup of the vision that God has imparted to you. Your gift, your, your apostle, pastoral, servanthood, helps, all that you are. And is unified because of what we believe and who we are, what we believe in, and the revelation of the vision. That fitly joined together puts fire behind us and gives us a reason to run, a reason to run with it. That is the fire behind the run. That is the fruit behind the run. Make it plain that they may run with it. That they may run with it. So I extend to you the question again. What do we get when we get you? What does this church get when we get you? In the ministry, on, in the pharmacy, what are we getting? Are we getting the vision? Are we running with it in the school system? Are we running with it in the pharmacy? Are we running with it in IT? Are we running with it at the automotive shop? Are we running with it on the basketball court? Are we running with it in whatever aspect in life? Or are we just running in the safe place in the, in the ministry? Are we just running in the same place? Are we taking the vision to the nations? Are we taking the vision to the community? Where are we taking this? Where, where are we pouring into the thing, the thing that has been pouring into us, what are we pouring it into? A few months ago, I gave a testimony of how I was able to hear a word outside the ministry. But before we go there, I'm going to explain that. I'm going to make that clear and I'm going to make that plain. That that was not outside the confines of personal and corporate ministries. 
That was not outside of that confines. It was an extension of the body. What you do in the marketplace is an extension of who you are in here and who you are in Christ. That's the part of what you get when you get me. That's a part of what you get when we get you. Right. That's a part of your growth, your maturity, your confidence in God and who you were called and chosen to be. The Bible goes on to tell us to go ye therefore and, and, and preach and teach the good news of the gospel. Tell us to do the work, like I said, of the evangelists. This is where marketplace, men, marketplace and ministry meets. Where a unified relationship is formed. This is where a little one. This is where the vision is manifested. This is where the strong nations is developed. It's not just going to be developed in just the fact that um, we fellowship together and we worship together. This is saying run, run to the marketplace so that a little one, a small one can become a strong nation. When Peter received his vision, his revelation of who Christ was, even though he had some situations after that, but we ain't gonna deal with that because we know we have situations that Christ has put us in place with, that we have to be put in place about. We know that, even in ministry. But that didn't stop Peter. After that, Peter was able to minister life, to preach the gospel. He was able to run. He was able to bring many to the house of God, to the church. To, he was able to get many saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, healing. Once he had clarity and given the authority and the instructions to run, it didn't matter. It said that he told the prophet so that the prophet could tell the people, but he also told the prophet. So that just didn't mean he was just telling the people. He was just telling the little people. He was telling the ministry leaders. He was telling everybody to run. The best example of a runner to me was Peter. So I'm going to tell you in your thought process throughout the week, throughout life, as soon as you can, to think about. What do First United get when it gets you? I love that. <laughs> what do yeah. the community get? Amen. Amen. What do we get? What do the unbeliever get? Amen. When they get you? What do Ralph's get? <laughs> when he gets you? Do, do they get a form of godliness? Do they get a church member without power, without a witness, without a testimony, without a message? A message in their life, 
and what they stand for that's representing Christ in the ministry. People used to say to all us all the time, that's a first united. <laughs> Why? Because we united in what we believe. And we wore the perfume of Christ in who we were and who we are. That we didn't say anything. We just be. The power and authority just was behind what we believed. Spirit filled world worship ministry. What we believe, the unity that brings us, you that makes us, that causes us to work together. Do we all believe the same thing? Do we all have the same vision? The vision of the ministry. That's what brings us together to be able to build the house. What do you get when you get me as a minister? I'm going to tell you what you get when you get me. So that when you leave this place and when you go home this week, and as we're going through this fast, as we're allowing God to break down the flesh and to increase himself in our life, you talk to your God, the God, our God, the one we believe in. And you ask him, and you first, Connect with your own personal purpose. Your own personal purpose. And allow it to connect with who you know you are in God. That you may run with the vision of the ministry and the vision of the gospel. Because until you know who you are, until you're able to stand on the foundation of who you are you won't be able to stand on the foundation effectively on what the ministry is as a minister you get in me to reach the hearts of the people of, king, of the kingdom of God that when I pray it is my desire to enter into the holy place and to make intercession by praying in the spirit. As a prophetic minister of the gospel of Christ, my main desire is to please and to obey God. To deliver his word that he speaks through me to his people. Having a passion to help create an atmosphere where God is pleased to dwell. I love to worship. I am drawn to his presence and love to experience his glory in the room. I make efforts to the best of my ability coupled with the grace of God to represent Christ in every aspect of my life. I am a nurse and have worked in a medical field which I felt was a calling to help. Helping others bringing healing to the hurting which was the compassion and the heart of Jesus which was a characteristic of Jesus. So when you get me, you get someone who withstood the web and weathered hurdles in life. Many hurdles and obstacles in life, which God has still shown to be active in every circumstance and every situation. 
So First United gets not just, it gets every experience I had in life. Sometimes that don't come across all oh, great, but that's when you have to allow times like this for God to decrease you. What does First United get when we get you? How can your personal occupation, call to ministry, or call to the church impact or contribute to the manifestation of the vision of First United? Because the fact that you are a part, that means they're all one. Many churches have been affected by people that's just not knowing that. You know, mass exodus of people just not knowing that who they are are part of the vision of their ministry. Leaving some ministries with abandonment and mistrust issues that have rippled through the body of Christ. Because many of the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the pastor, they ab abandon the purpose of what edifying the body They have taken a ministry out of being attached to the body and placed it in an individualized agenda. But we don't know, realize that that can be done right inside. Right inside a vision, a division, an individualized agenda. We have traumatized one another. On both sides, we have traumatized. From the pulpit and the pew, the pew, we have traumatized one another. For that mere fact alone, and we don't know who we are. We don't trust who we are. Or what we believe in. Or what our purpose is. They rank and spoke about building the house, building a house, and the different roles of building a house and what it takes. The gifts, the talents. She talked about how there's an architect and how the architect sees the whole vision. The architect makes the plans. It, and before there's an architect, there's also a, a manufacturer, a creator, a designer. That the architect receives. Then she talked about how there is a, a project manager. One that has the vision. One that knows how to put it in place and put it in order. But we as people, if we don't know our place, if we hadn't sought God about who we are and what we get when a ministry get you, or what we get when we get you, if you don't know, then the project manager has difficulties in positioning us, in positioning you. She broke it down, and I may make some adjustments, that we are a church full of vessels, vessel to honor, vessel to dishonor, but if those who are vessels are sanctified, cleanse 
when we cleanse ourselves, when we decrease, when we fast, when we pray, when we seek God for who we are and who we are to ministry, then the project manager because maybe the project manager knows, which I'm pretty sure, but it's when we don't know, creates conflict. And when conflict is created, there has to be resolution and resolve in order to fulfill and to build. Well, there's conflict within our own individual selves to know who we are. That it may be engrafted in. We have been on a fast to cleanse and to sanctify ourselves in order that we will be prepared to run. If anything that we get out of this fast it ought to be to submission, a submission spirit. It ought to be to know who we are, to contribute to the vision, and to stand in that place that we can build a great house. Not only a great house in here, but a house that will be effective in the marketplace and in the community. Amen. Amen. That's all I have.